well, well, well. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It's a nice Black Wednesday, and we got plenty to talk about today. But first things first, as always, want to be wishing you well. Want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. And without further ado, let's go talk about some magic and money. Get into the live scene right here, right now. Bitcoin, take another stab, actually, at this uh, blue 377 exponential moving average right here. But overall, still defended quite well. And my main point with this, and what I'm really going to be focusing on over the next uh, day, day or two, whatever it might be, I would be looking for a retest of this uh, 200 exponential and 200 symbol down here at about 40 600. I'd, I'd really be looking for that in the next uh, day or two, I'd say. Of course, timing of that sort of thing, not, you know, not something that I feel too comfortable with. But overall, uh, that's what I want to see if Bitcoin is going to really give give a go in this range. And realistically, by closing over the 200 exponential yesterday, again, this purple moving average right here, to me, that is that is something that we quite literally haven't done in, you know, well over a year. The, the, uh, the last time that we were living above this, uh, this 200 simple was... March of 2018. Uh, ever since then, it's actually been all of our highs. And the fact is, on a massive, massive, massive green dildonator right over here, closing above this uh, 200 exponential, 200 simple, on extremely heavy volume, that to me is uh, it's significant. So I would imagine that Bitcoin's probably going to put in time uh, moving between the 200 simple and 200 exponent, or sorry, 200 simple and uh, 377 exponential right over here. And I kind of use the 200 simple and 200 exponential interchangeably right now, just because they're so fucking close. Obviously, in the past, they haven't been as close, but right now, they're pretty much right in the exact same area so with so with that in mind <clears throat> i'd be looking for bitcoin to kind of try to consolidate this area you do see on the lower time frames it is getting a little bit tired over here we do see some major bearish divergence on the three hour delta time frame right over here on the rsi three hour stokes are actually still up to be fair um, and then on top of that, we got the three-hour jewel actually giving a sell signal. Uh, so I'd imagine that uh, one more tick, and this one should give a f this one should confirm. But I imagine this 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 one does look like it's going to play out. Um, so overall, you know, would I be looking for this move to bring it all the way back down to 4,600 and retest that uh, in, in and retest that uh, that level more? You know, more uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, clearly, well. Yeah, probably. Like I said, over the next couple of days, um, I would be looking for that move. Anyways, I'm going to go over here to the four hour. Do you want to see how high this divergence does go? We got the four hour. Uh, yeah, four hours of signaling a little bit of divergence right over here. I'm going to imagine that probably six hour is. Hey, six hours actually has a little bit as well. Needs to confirm a local high, but if we can take out uh, 48.75 to the downside, then yeah, I would be looking for a move back down and test a little bit lower. But overall, does that mean that I'm like necessarily bearish in the lower time frames? No. In fact, I'd be looking for 4600 to be acting as a pretty preliminary and prominent support. So. You know, as long as Bitcoin's above this area, I really don't want to be, uh, well, especially short term bearish, or I mean, I mean, super short term bearish. I mean, we just talked about there's all sorts of divergences. Yeah, I would be looking for a pullback in the next day or two. Um, but medium time frame, I suppose you could say, I would not be bearish in, as long as Bitcoin's above this 4,600 level right over here. As long as it's defending that area, it's just not appropriate from a trader's perspective. Of course, opinion, separating opinion from trading, you know, those are two majorly different things. <laughs> major, major different things. But my opinion can be, um, you know, my opinion can be, you know, we're just going to kind of offset between this area, but as a trader have to be looking to actually be buying dips. You know, if I'm a medium time frame trader uh, within this area, closer to the 200 simple 200 exponential, but I'm actually not going to be doing that myself. Uh, I pretty much closed most of my long. Actually, I've actually gone ahead and, and just sold the spot underline. I'm working on my main account right now, but um, I do want to keep everyone updated with that because I've been getting a lot of questions. Um, again, this is this is the same position that I opened up at 39.30. Uh, I've basically sold a bunch of in the money calls against it. I actually have a little bit of short deltas right here, right above, I think above about 50.50 now. Actually, uh, uh, that's when they start to kick in. But right now, uh, Bitcoin just kind of backing off and what looks to me to be another test of the 377. So I would be more comfortable with uh, with with angling my position, you know, my uh, my my my, ugh, my P and L graph a little bit lower. Familiar with options as I've sold, I've sold the 42.50 strike uh, deep in the money calls versus my 39.30 long stock, um, well, or long coins, whatever you want to call. It. Anyways, uh, going back on over into the lower time frames, I'm curious, do we have any of uh, you know any of our other oscillators uh, switching around? We got hourly stokes right over here, uh, coming back down, <clears throat> but that's just an hourly. Uh, I mean, realistically speaking, we could have another grind of this 5,000 or 50.50 right over here, and then in you know and then put in time and then come down again. Like I said, I'm looking for this move in the next day, day or to something like that makes sense the sooner the better actually for the bulls um the longer that it takes the more you know the more that this will just have to put in you know for exhaustion to the upside which would imply that you know it's not necessarily the right way to be thinking but for now uh as we are still about just one day afterwards or, or quite literally less than one day after closing above that 200 simple and 200 exponential you know i would still be running with that sort of you know initial frame of mind 
Anyways, uh, do we have uh, do we have anything to be aware of on the jewel right now? On the hourly, nope. It's only the three hour. I think that's signaling something, or perhaps signaling something. We're gonna get another tick on this in the next uh, two hours and ten minutes. If you have access to the jewel, look for this light blue to curl over. If that curls over, that's a big and one of the one of the best kind of signals. Uh, two hour delta time frame right over here. Uh, actually, same thing, a little bit more advanced in it. But two hour has not two hours actually overshot the signal, so perhaps that could be a warning sign for the three hour. But again, still playing out some, you know, still having some major bearish divergence over here. Doesn't mean that we can't have another, uh, you know, another grind of that 50 50 ish area. But overall, like I said, in the next couple of days, I'd really want to see another test of the 200 simple, 200 exponential right around that 4,600 level, as that is, you know, that's that's where I can actually take trades off of. In this range right here, we're quite literally right in the middle. So again, you know, it's, it's, it's always a very delicate conversation relating both trading <clears throat> and then just actual analysis. But as far as trading goes, we're actually getting damn close to this resistance right around 5150. Um, so, you know, if we did pop back up there again, would I take another sell right over there um, or another sell? I mean, I didn't really sell the first time to be to be quite honest. Didn't get it. Didn't get a perfect position. Jesus Christ. You know, the you know, life goes on. Right. Uh, but my point is that would I take another sell right around here, maybe for a scalp um, at that level. You know, I don't, you know, looking at the daily right now, do I think that Bitcoin has enough juice to break the 377? I mean, if, you know, if it does, then we're going to have a straight shot to 55, 50, 56 area. Um, looking at daily stokes, they are looking very tired, but still technically up. Uh, the last boost to kind of close the day out right around, uh, where do we close? Yeah, 49. Very good close actually yesterday. Um, did open those guys back up, but again, they are getting quite tired. And looking at all of the medium, to, medium to low time frames as well, it's looking to me like uh, you know would uh, you know a nice healthy pullback would certainly not be out of the question. <clears throat> Anyways, um, what else do we have to be aware of right now while we're here? Yeah, daily RSI getting very, 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 very high, but of course. Can't go higher, bro. No, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, this is just a very strong RSI. It it offers up the you know it it it, it makes it easier to get divergence, which is typically how I use RSI. But <clears throat> you know more importantly, we are seeing an we are seeing a level in the RSI that we just haven't seen since really December 2017. I mean you know we're higher than any other point for the for over a year now um basically the 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 only higher point was uh was twenty thousand uh, again in 2017 end of 2017 so you know you know realistically speaking this this historically has not been stained for that long um and that's also why I'd be a little bit apprehensive here. Not only that, but uh, the MVT signal is now going to be signaling, well, <laughs> signaling what it does and bringing up the MVT signal right here, right now. This is what makes me, uh, again, a little bit more apprehensive about this move as we are signaling red right now. But keep in mind, this is only the first two to three days of signaling red, which this oscillator, while it has been perfect getting all the major highs and all the major lows in Bitcoin's history, um, <clears throat> when I look at something like this, you realize that it puts in time in these areas. I mean, this was a little bit more of an exaggerated area where it put in about, what is it, from July to November. So, you know, what, uh, I don't know, five, six months um, in the red zone here. So it's not like just because it turns red, you immediately short. No, but <clears throat> it's on the radar, uh, just like right over here. It's been about a month in the red zone as well at the 20,000 area. If we scroll back a little bit more and go back to the last time that it signaled red, right over here, took about another few months in this zone, in this bull trap, took, a, took about a month on this uh, major high right over here took about uh, a few weeks on this major high right over here so again my point is that is that just because it's signaling red doesn't mean i <clears throat> immediately just go fucking rambo uh shorting no it's just on my mind and what i'm looking for is the next major resistance so you know looking at uh funnily enough looking at bitstamp my 377 is much higher Oh, that, that's going to be because it has much more price action history. That's funny. Um, on BitMexico, you'd think that they'd have enough price action history to to populate this properly, but apparently not. Let's go to the rubber match. Let's go check out GDAX. GDAX has actually hit the 377 as well. At least I would kind of calculate it as such. So I actually would run with that. I'm, I'm curious why the divergence between those two. Let's see what Finex is doing. Yeah, Finex way below. Phoenix way below. Um, Phoenix actually looks significantly different. Looking at the uh, daily Stokes, they're actually headed uh, healthily up. Uh, daily RSI, again, getting back to those crazier levels, but that's that's to be expected on a major breakout. I mean, Jesus Christ, what you, <laughs> no shit. Anyways, uh, back on to back on a spot charts in Bit Mexico. As I do default to this one, when in doubt. And, uh, and overall, that's what I wanted to get out. And I know that everyone's getting extremely, extremely excited, extremely bullish. And that's, you know, that's, that's what you'd expect after a major breakout like this above this critical uh, 42, sorry, 4130-ish area right over here, which we were watching a couple of days ago. Or sorry, this, the, 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 uh, the past week, week and a half. 
Um, <clears throat> but I do want to fade my expectations because again, we have hit a major resistance right over here, not on just the daily, but also if we go over here to Bitstamp and, uh, and do our higher timeframes in the monthly, we do see the 21 exponential coming in right around this range as well. And what's very enlightening to me is that we see the red 10 moving moon average crossing the downside of the yellow 21 exponential moving average. And we've actually come up and tested that officially, essentially. I mean, you know, we came about what, uh, you know, a hundred bucks short, but on a monthly a hundred bucks short is that's close enough, man. That's just fucking close enough. So I suppose my point is, is that as long as we're living below and respecting this 21 exponential as resistance, for, for me, from a higher time for perspective, I would be looking at this to be the next kind of like, you know, identifiable uh, trade potential. Of course, if Bitcoin breaks above this area, I'm, I, I, I'd be bullish. It's not that I would be even be neutral. I'd just be bullish. Um, but I need to see a monthly close above this. And we are on the third day of April now. So, of course, we're, we're, we're past the fucking April's Fool's Day. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, very annoying day. But... Um, but my point is, is that, uh, you know, if we can actually, you know, if, if, if we close above that by end of month, I would just no longer be bearish. I mean, going back into 2014, 2015, the 21 exponential got the price section perfectly. Uh, once we broke below it, that was doom's drop onto your ultimate, uh, your, your ultimate low. And then once we broke back above it right over here, timing a perfect, beautifully entry, uh, all, all opportunity costs, you know, even inclusive, all the way from about $300 to $20,000. Very, 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 very powerful. Very good. Right now, we're just we're, we're fucking around with it once again. And to me, this is a cross which is being respected as of right now. Now, if we would have closed yesterday's daily um, right around that 4,700-ish level, it would have looked a lot more like a you know a, a rejection. Right now, closing about 200 bucks off the high uh, for yesterday at 4,900 looks definitely a lot more. You know, it's going to be a, a lot more autistic. But I would say autistic. I'm autistic. Um, no, it would be, you know, it, it, it does offer up the potential for an actual constructive move now on the higher time frames. On the lower time frames, I still would be looking for, a, you know, a rel a, you know a pullback relatively soon in the next, uh, next couple of days. Uh, yeah, at the very least, to test, to test around 4,600. Then again, you know, you go down to the lower time frames. Did we already test 4,600? I mean, we did see a move down to 4,650 uh, yesterday. And I'd, I'd still overall be looking for it. Again, you know, no real rush for it. But sometime before, yeah, some, sometime in the next couple of days, I'd imagine. <clears throat> Anyways, back on to back onto our high time frames, back on the monthly. You know, this is the big thing is that it's very important right now to separate low time frames from medium time frames from high and macro time frames because on the high and macro time frame, still we have not gotten confirmation of anything really changing about the overall trend. It's right there. It can happen. And if it is gonna happen, it's gonna happen. It, it will happen this month, um, I would imagine so. I mean, you're not just going to pop up over here just to uh, ju uh, just to grind this area for a while. No, it's uh, it's probably going to happen sooner rather than later if it were to happen. But <clears throat> as long as we're respecting it, I would run, I would run with the assumption that the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. So again, as a trader, that would be my disposition right now. Although I am completely flat, so to be very you know very direct. I have no real open deltas right now. And I think that that's been a very confusing point of the last like, you know, of the last like couple of weeks because I've actually been long and I've been talking about how I don't believe that the actual trend of Bitcoin has shifted. Well, of course, the higher time frame trend, you know, we will, as we just kind of uh, verified, hasn't really shifted. In fact, we're actually showing some a little bit uh, concerning signals with the MBT signal. And so we can look at a few other things as well. But as far as a trader on lower time frames, the play has been long ever since Bitcoin started uh, was putting in that uh, in that formation, that ascending triangle um, at the what was it, four thousand level essentially breakout at forty one uh, forty one thirty, I believe it was. So again, you know, looking at this, I always want to keep my perspective in place. Doesn't mean that it can't change around. It can change around, but I, you know, I want to know exactly where my, where my points are for actually changing my macro outlook. So. Could it happen? Yes. Has it happened? No. To be very clear and direct, as I feel, maybe sometimes I'm not. I'm not too clear with that, but uh, but hopefully that that hopefully hopefully that's all good. Anyways, um, okay. So we spoke all about that. Uh, let's go back down to a daily. Do we have anything else to be aware of here on the daily? Uh, no, not so much. Again, I would be running with the assumption on a short to medium time frame basis that as long as we are above 4,600, I'd be looking to probably buy a pullback for you know scalp or a little bit of a move. Uh, higher time frame perspective, we are damn close near to, we're, we're damn near some pretty major massive resistances. So I'm not necessarily looking to hodl position for a long time until we can clear those areas. If we can clear 51, I think it's 51.50. Let's actually go confirm this on the monthly. 
Yeah, or sorry, it's actually 52, a little bit above 52. Um, if we can clear 5200, then that would drastically change that outlook. Of course, the weekly is also going to be of the utmost importance as well, as we are going to very, 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 very likely close our first weekly total above this purple 200 exponential, the first time that we've actually even seen it since, what is this, um, late November. So that would be a change behavior on this scale as well. And of course, you know, before, I, before when we were looking at this, the play was agnostic as long as you're within this range between the 200 simple and 200 exponential at 3450 and uh and 4000 and or sorry 4100 and then it, whichever way that it breaks that's the next big direction and right now well i pretty fucking <laughs> extremely fucking likely that we do work our way up now here's the thing Fr from a weekly perspective you know assuming that we close anywhere above 4600 i would be what is going on over here i would be looking <laughs> phone's going crazy um i'd be looking to buy any sort of pullback anywhere around the weekly 200 exponent or sorry 200 or, the weekly 21 exponential and this is obviously not going to happen this week but sometime next week if it were to happen so that would kind of also be on the side of looking for a little bit more of a pullback whenever that happens um that's kind of the era that i'd be uh, uh, uh that i'd really have my eyes on so keep that one in mind because this is very important going forwards here as i do want to see this area defended if bitcoin is if bitcoin really is going to switch around the mark cycle right now we do not want to see it go back below about 40 41 to 4200 i'd say 4200 we could say as long as it maintains above there from the weekly perspective you do have a case you do have a case although i'm trying to show everything here because because it's you know it's it's very important to know all the triggers but also explain exactly what i'm doing myself because that's you know that's a whole different you know that's a whole different can, can of worms <clears throat> anyways okay so we talked about that we talked about the daily let's go to the two day what's the two day looking like two days hidden resistance as well right around the 377 exponential 5150 so we do know that there's a significant amount of resistances in this area again shorter term to medium term time frames i am looking for a pullback here um i mean in, in you know based off of the higher time frame resistances essentially uh three day right at resistance as well the 89 exponentials you can see right here but we still have this you know you see the 377 coming in where coming in 4550 so again i would like to see this area retested again sometime in the next uh, um, in the next few days, we actually will be getting a new, uh, a new three day dildo in, uh, oh, later tonight at 8 PM Eastern time. So yeah, some, sometime within the next three days, then I'll be looking for that pullback most likely. Uh, let's see what our oscillators are looking like. we got three day stokes headed upwards and onwards. And more importantly, we do have something new going on over here. So let's actually talk a little bit more about the bullish case right now as, uh, the three day stokes are, as you can see, and motherfucker keeps on adding a. That is so strange. It keeps on adding an alert whenever I do that. Um, but as you can see, th this trend line, which was born all the way back in uh, December 15th, 2017, which had been getting all of the major highs for Bitcoin for the past uh, year, is actually being taken out right now. Now, of course, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of hours left until from, from right now until the end of the day. But when it comes down to it, <clears throat> when it comes down to it, uh, I would be saying that this is like, likely going to break the trend right here. So we do have something new going on from this perspective. Um, again, doesn't mean that you can't have a pullback. You know, it's things aren't just just like we didn't go straight down. You're not going to go straight up. Uh, you have your I, I like to also say that you have your pumps in your bear market. You have your dumps in your bull market. You know, I just it's it's very important to get away from the gang thinking. I, yeah, I see a lot of people get stuck thinking that because you know, it's been a bear market. You have to be bearish or sorry, but well, you're going to be bear in a bearish market. But what I mean to say is that people get stuck in these gangs and no matter what the recent price action is telling you, they fight it. And that's exactly what you don't want to get caught in because both gangs get wrecked at both times. You want to be a trader, an agnostic trader who, you know, goes essentially goes with the flow, <laughs> essentially takes advantage of who's ever winning. But fair enough. That's, you know, it's, it's, it's a financial game. It's a very deadly game. And, uh, and that's, well, it's the best way that I've found to play it. Anyways, uh, two day total time frame. We got two day total stokes headed upwards and onwards. These are levels that we haven't seen in, um, in about a year. Uh, pretty damn, pretty damn powerful, pretty damn erect. And again, we actually did solidify the last two day total in stone. Again, another test of the 377, it looks like. And overall, I would be looking for this one to pull back in the next couple of days as well. Uh, we are seeing this getting quite high, especially on the RSI. Uh, this, these are levels, again, that we just haven't seen since December 2017. That was the only time that we've really been higher. So, <clears throat> you know, a lot of things to be aware of as we come into this, you know, as we come into this area. Anyways, uh, let's go over here to the weekly. And I do want to check this. I do want to check the weekly RSI, which this is going to break our trend line right here and from the rsi perspective that is actually quite powerful 
So I'm trying to, you know, again, I'm really trying to represent the bullish case well, even though we are, e even though we are similar to red on the MT, and even though we are hitting some extremely powerful resistances, uh, we actually seen, we are actually seeing some divergences in behavior, some, some changes in behavior more, more accurately said. And as you can see right now, um, <clears throat> going on over here yeah uh okay so as you, as you've seen right now we are kind of working our way back up into the neutral zone but more importantly we broke this trend line that bitcoin had kind of been consolidating above for you know what's five six months that is you know a new thing going on in fact we're, we're not only taking out that but we're also going to be taking out this neutral trend line zone right over here i guess you know i guess you could raise it up just a little bit in fact this would be a little bit more appropriate uh right here right where we kind of based off of for the you know for the three-year bull run from 2015 to 2018 uh of course a lot of days left until the end of the week but i'd imagine that if we do close anywhere above this area well, that's going to be another big marker for me. I mean, if you know, if if you see the RSI close above this level, that would be bull market territory, if, you know, historically speaking. So again, uh, you do see kind of a similar signature in 2014, 2015. But I think that this last move is really going to throw all of the fractal or fractal practitioners uh, for a loop because you know, pe you know, people have been talking about a fucking fractal this whole way through. Like a year ago, they were talking about it, you know, all the way over here. Uh, just recently, they're talking about it, you know, I don't know, maybe right over here. It's just it's <laughs> it's one of those things, you know, you got to be able to trade it. It's it, it might look good in hindsight, but it only takes one time to get wrecked. Anyways, um, OK. All right. We spoke all about that. Let's go see where GBDC closed the day out. GBDC closing uh, big up uh, five five uh, seventy four. Heading up to our next resistance uh, right over here. Yep, actually did close below it, but big volume on this move. And I'd imagine that uh, if we do, you know, we probably do grind this top one more time, which would insinuate another grind of that 51, 5200 ish area on Bitcoin's major resistances. And then I'd imagine a little bit of a pullback uh, at the very least towards, well, at the very least, we kind of already saw it at 552 right here. And then if that area breaks, we'd be looking somewhere right around in this zone from 5. Five and a quarter, we could say. But as long as it's above five and a quarter, I would be looking at this with more constructive goggles from this, um, you know, from from uh, from this structure. So again, uh, GBDC has not really been leading, though. That's a big thing. GBDC has not led, and that is also a change of behavior. We've seen GBDC lead this market for over a year, and now it's actually following. It's having these moves after Bitcoin spot charts have these moves. So I am going to start to uh, look at this less and less just because I don't believe it's as important. Why is this perhaps going on? Well, I think there's a lot of explanations, but I think the most likely explanation is that because as time expires, as time, as time goes on and on, it's more and more likely that um, it's more and more likely that we get an ETF, that Bitcoin gets an ETF. And at that point in time, there's really, you know, it diminishes the case for GBDC a lot because right now that's you know one of the better ways to get in uh, if you want to do it like the traditional investment fund way. Even though it's on an OTC exchange, which is absolute bullshit, all that good stuff. Still, <clears throat> I would say that uh, you know if, if if an ETF comes around, I you know I don't really understand why people would use something like that over a more legitimate vehicle. Um, so that could be, could be an indication that in the, you know, in the coming future. And, you know, I, I think that we've been saying this for a while as well. Jesus Christ, man, I'm having like major allergies right now. If you can't tell, um, you know, that, that would be a major marker that essentially, <clears throat> Ugh, Jesus, man, <laughs> that, that an ETF will happen. Uh, so again, you know, keep your eyes on that as, uh, as that, as that is, uh, that is what that would imply. Uh, let's go check out CMEs right over here. It's 49.85, uh, looking very similar to spot. We're not going to get a good read on our higher time frames just because, just because this thing has not been around for as long. So it doesn't really have enough time to populate a 200 simple and 200 exponential, which are actually overhead right now. Um, but you know, kind of coming in that same area. So you do see the same area getting hit right over here. I didn't have this marked in, but that would be our next major resistance. And where's the next major support over, overall for this guy right over here, about 4,600, that same area. Uh, but CME is actually not too useful right now because we're kind of in we're kind of in unspoken territory as far as uh, higher time frames go. Anyways, back on to spot charts, and uh, and this is where I'd feel a lot more comfortable with you know with kind of looking at it. So essentially, you know what I'm looking at, what I'd be looking at from a low time frame perspective, I'd be looking for a pullback. Um, you know. 4,600 would, would, would kind of be the dream ideal somewhere back into this blue box territory. I'd like to see that area retested in the next couple of days. If it takes longer then I would probably not be a buyer of that area. However, <clears throat> by the same token, if we pop back up here to about 5150 grind this area, once again, I would probably look for a little bit of a scalp short 
However, this is a very dangerous play because if Bitcoin actually does flip around the script and, uh, and really put some more time around this area and break 5150, it is going to be another rip towards, you know, likely this 5600-ish area right over here which I'll mark out right now. So again, we haven't seen this, we haven't seen this area in a long, 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 long time. But if I put on my volume profile, you'll, you'll notice that, uh, yeah, the next kind of higher value node that we see is right around about 5,500 to 5,600 right here. So we're kind of in no man's land right now. And Bitcoin can really rip whichever way that it decides to move, which is, you know, which is cause for concern because if you are, you know, if you are, well, what's the best word for this? If you are over leveraged, then this is the range of fucking death and decay as managing risk on a position right like this, right in the middle of these two major resistance, sorry, th this major resistance, this major support is going to be a fucking pain in the ass. So, you know, the closer, you know, if I was looking for a short, the closer that I can get to this, uh, this horizontal right here at about 5150, uh, the better as, you know, I'd have to risk less to find out if that trade is going to work. If we do take out 5150, more importantly, I would be looking for that next rip towards, I, I guess that's going to be like a $500 rip towards uh, 55, 5600 ish right over here. Um, by the same token, um, and the lower time frames, I mean, nothing really too crazy right there. 4,600 is kind of where I got my eyes on. If I did have to buy a bounce, um, I would, you know, again, it just, it's just because we have the 200 simple and 200 exponential movement average right there. So if I am going to be wrong on that, I have to, you know, don't have to risk all that much. And by the same token, and more importantly speaking, if we do take it out to the downside, can just as easily flip short and capture this move probably all the way back down to about 43, we'll, we'll call it. Or sorry, no, 44. 44 is what I'd be looking for first. No, it's it's 4350 right here. Let, let me actually get this right. There we go. Yeah, right here at about 40 4350 we could call. It. So, <clears throat> you know, again, multiple plays to be had, but right now when we're in the middle of this range, you know, if you are going to be taking a trade, just understand that uh, risk management on, you know, on a trade like this Mm, it's, I mean, you, you, you might be risking more than you really need to. That's, that's a problem with it. That's why I don't like it as a setup, like right here, right now. And that's why I play options. Cause I'd rather think in ranges rather than like, you know, specific just points where it's just win or lose. No, with options, you can, with options, you can just, you can be wrong and still fucking win. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, that's why a lot of the times when I do enter into a, to a position, you know, I, I, you know, I can almost just throw a little bit of caution to the wind because I know if I use my options properly, I can turn that around more often than not. And if I'm a little bit more slick with it, can actually even produce a profit when being completely wrong on spot direction. So... So, so, so that, you know, I should, I should explain what I'm going to do with my position. Um, you know, if you are familiar with options, if Bitcoin does take out 5150 to the upside, I will uncover my calls. Sorry. I will uncover my longs, my, my, my long coins. Ugh. Jesus Christ, man. I need a, I need some, like some allergy medicine. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, you know, I would, I, 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 you know, essentially by doing that, I could either buy some more spot, spot underline, or I could just get rid of my short calls. For right now, I sold the 4250 strike calls for about uh, 700, 800 bucks. So I'm, so I'm basically covered all the way up to about 5,000. Anywhere above 5,000, I don't really make anything more. I don't, I also don't lose anything, but I don't make anything more. So I, so for me, it's consideration. Do I want to buy some more spot underline? Um, I'd probably wait until we actually take out the former high at about 5150. If we could do that, then yes, uh, I might as well. So I'll miss out on about a hundred dollars gain but hey that's trading man and you don't have to get every you know every last little bit of a bit of a move to make this a living i mean it is it is a major disservice that i see a lot of people do the, to themselves that you know put this pressure on themselves feeling like they have to you know they they have to get everything of everything so understand that you know this game is a long-term game and you know it's the idea is 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 long term sustainable success, which is going to come along with failures as well. I mean, at this on this date, I don't know a single uh, I don't know a single technical analyst who's never taken a loss. By the same token, if we head back down, I will only actually get rid of my spot underline if we take out forty six hundred. If we take out forty six hundred, then yes, I get rid of my you know I get rid of my long stock and I keep the short calls and then I'll make in, uh, and then I'll make on any move below forty you know forty six hundred essentially. So that's uh, <clears throat> that's what I kind of have my eyes on right now. Uh, as long as we're in the middle of this range, you know, yeah, I would be I would be leaning towards uh, to uh, towards a retest of this blue box territory sometime in the next couple of days. If Bitcoin is incredibly strong, it will it will beast right through this area, 
and also and, and you know and basically the next trade will be at uh, 5600 so again understand where we kind of are in the overall grand scheme of things understand where all of the major resistances are from the higher time frame perspective we got the daily 377 we got the weekly uh 50 exponential we got the two day 377 exponential we got the three day or sorry that's two day 377 we got the three day 89 exponential we got the monthly 21 exponential so all these things conversion on this 51 50 ish area 5200 ish area so that is is an area of extreme, extreme interest to me, especially as the MBT signal, which has been a perfect, perfect, perfect indicator, is signaling a, you know, the beginnings of a major top. That's where I want to be careful. That's where that's where I want to, you know, uh, uh, that's where I want to be protective of my, you know, of my positions. For right now, <clears throat> for right now. It, it, it makes it very difficult, and I don't really want to be adding right now unless we take out that 50, 51, 50 ish level. Then I, then, uh, then I will reluctantly add. But, you know, at that point, it's, it's likely for another $500 move. And really, at that point, then you got to start thinking, okay, well, we are, we are likely to take out the 21 expansion moving average at that point, you know, by end of month. And that, that would change, you know, uh, that would change my overall look on Bitcoin. I mean, to just straight up bullish for, you know, the macro timeframes. Uh, I'd probably what I what I'd probably do at that point in time is, you know, I'll <laughs> turn more into a, more into a, a more into a hodler. Really, there's no real reason, in my opinion, to risk risk too much trading. There's, you know, it's just at that point in time. I mean, you, you know, you've you've got it. It's it's fucking bull market on once again. Uh, so so I do want to kind of speak about that for a second. If that were to happen. The big thing is, is that I see a lot of people will make fortunes as, you know, as a bull gang member or a bear gang member, but they'll lose it as soon as the market cycle turns around. So if that actually does happen, the next big skill is going to be recognizing that, you know, that, that inflection point for me, it's 51, 50, 5,200 on the monthly 21 Bitcoin can get above there. All right. I'm, you know, that's, that's my rule. That's just that, uh, that is my rule. Anyways, okay, we spoke enough about uh, about Mr. Bitcoin. Let's go over and check out. Uh, let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. She's had she had a very impressive move up as well, uh, taking out the three seven seven. Again, this is why I have that rule where whenever you have a golden cross and you're above the twenty one, I'm not bearish. I mean, I'm I'm bullish on something like that. Uh, major volume spike as we take out the blue three seven seven exponential moving average right here. Again, this is this is also why the the golden cross supersedes everything else that we spoke about. Yes, we did talk about you know the bearish divergence on you know on 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 daily Litecoin. We did talk about uh, the Stokes, which snaked around plenty of times, but ultimately up. We even did talk about the Daily Jewel, which still actually might might provide a setup, but it's still going to take a couple days, two to three days. So that's the thing is <clears throat> when I'm looking at Mrs. Litecoin, the, all of that is superseded by a golden cross on the daily. This is why I use exponentials. This is why I use moving averages. And above all major moving averages right now on a major spike in volume as we take out a major resistance, That this is exactly what we were talking about yesterday it's 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 no longer a question for me am i you know am i looking for new for new lows on mrs litecoin no i'm i'm not i'm just i'm i'm not uh barring any sort of like major fucking major fuck up uh mrs litecoin i i just I, i'm just generally bullish on it now i don't really see too much stopping you from these i mean we can come up with 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 targets and whatnot we spoke about the 90 dollar target yesterday i mean we basically got there already uh it's 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 not even really about targets anymore it's just i'm i'm generally looking for upside you know uh and, and probably probably to be a buyer of pullbacks which as of the right uh, you know as, as of the current moment in time <laughs> Uh, I would be, you know, I would like to buy a pullback, uh, 73 bucks around 73 bucks, but I actually don't even trade with Mrs. Mrs. Litecoin. So just kind of sharing what I do. Of course, it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but <sighs> Mrs. Litecoin, you know, that's, that, that was the best, um, that, uh, that was the best, what's it called argument for being out of the bear market. I would say, I would say Mrs. Litecoin has pretty much done everything that, uh, uh that I'd look for him. So fair enough. Uh, also of importance is actually going back into the history of Bitcoin or sorry, of Mrs. Litecoin. We do have information from the past bear mark cycle, which Mrs. Litecoin actually did turn around the cycle faster than Bitcoin. Mrs. Litecoin putting in, uh, sorry, putting in the lows around the same time in January 2015, but turned around into an actual uptrend uh, much sooner than Mr. Bitcoin. Uh, this one turning around, I'd say officially in June of 2015, we can go over to Mr. Bitcoin and... Whereas Mr. Bitcoin, yeah, turning around right over here, I'd say October 2015. So you know, a few months, few months apart. Could Mrs. Litecoin be, you know, be the harbinger of of hope? Could it be? Uh, perhaps. 
perhaps that has been the trend of the past. I mean, look at this. We actually have we actually have some similarities here. Um, you know, this rally has been on has been done on increasing volume all the way up. Fair enough. Uh, we do see weekly stokes getting way up there, but that's okay. They, they're going to stay up there during any sort of major trending move. Uh, weekly RSI getting right back into the bullish control zone for the first time in 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 over a year since January 2018. You know, these are significant things. These are very significant things. So, uh, so Mrs. Litecoin really, you know, really was the one to watch and really has been leading this market. You know, and that is that is now confirmed in my mind. Uh, the breakout out of this area right here is incredibly powerful. So, do I consider that Mr. Bitcoin? You know, could could Bitcoin? Uh, you know, put in uh, put in some downside when when Mrs. Litecoin is doing something like this. Well, that is actually also what we kind of did see in twenty uh, in 2014, 2015, right over here, where Mrs. Litecoin kind of had this major run while Bitcoin was essentially flat to down. But overall, I think the big point is uh, is is Mrs. Litecoin's bucking the trend. You know, Mrs. Litecoin's bucking the trend, and that you know, I, I don't I don't really see any reason to deny that. Uh, that's th this is a very powerful move on the weekly right here above all major movement averages and on increase uh, well still pretty young in the week so we can't really judge volume but I'd imagine based off the based off the lower time frames this is going to likely be increasing volume uh, this is pretty pretty impressive anyways uh, let's go check out Mr. Buterol certainly not not a Mrs. Litecoin uh, Mr. Buterol is certainly a lot weaker but hitting that next uh, 170 target that we spoke about yesterday in fact even overshooting it a little bit all the way to oh, another few bucks it looks like but overall, you know, for me, Mr. Buterall, doing the same sort of thing, but but a laggard towards the old, toward, uh, to, uh, towards the rest of the market. In fact, I'm actually going to get rid of all my drawings and redo it right here because this is all we need to look at. This resistance right here getting taken out yesterday, confirmed above. Yeah, I would consider this a test of the 200 exponential and kind of, you know, rejecting from it right now. It's probably going to do whatever Bitcoin does. So if Bitcoin does pull back, I'd look for this one to pull back as well. But hey, hey, I mean, this this you know this 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 should defend 163 as long as it defends 163 162 and a half 163 i would run with the assumption that this is probably going to be a buy actually sorry i take that back i do take that back uh no i would change that i would change that to this area right over here needs to defend this area right over here 153 and a half that's the critical area for mr buterall to remain in his more you know in his more constructive posturing but look at this you know this 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 rally has been done on, you know, on, on decreasing volume, actually. In fact, going all the way back on over here from our, from our prior lows, you know, is Mr. Is Mr. Buterall making some sort of massive ascending triangle? Perhaps, perhaps, but it certainly does not look as strong as the other majors. Uh, we do see daily RSI getting up there. I want to see it make new, I want to see it confirm new highs by end of day. That's going to be very important but for right now. Uh, still kind of right around there. I'm just going to going to be a little bit of a waiting game and I do consider this a front run of the 200 exponential so we probably do fall back down a little bit Lo looking at the lower time frames major bearish divergence obviously on the fucking hourly but let's go to a three hour uh three hour has none three hour has none to be fair uh this is again looking like a more powerful move I I I, I this on, on lower time frames it actually looks like it wants to give another try it actually does look like it wants to give another try shit if, if I was if I was trading lower time frames I'd be doing it like this I'd say hey as long as you kind of defend 168 and a half uh, that's okay. That looks okay to me. If you lose 168 and a half, I'd be looking for a move down to what was it, 163, 163 and a half. If you lose that area, then I uh, uh, then I look for a bounce at 153 and a half right over here. Those are you know th uh, those are the three areas where I'd kind of see potential trades emerge from. But I would be more patient with this one just because it has been the least inspiring of the top you know of the big three. So that is uh, that you know you know m must consider c must consider you know the relative strengths of these things. Uh, daily daily Stokes headed up once again, so that would certainly be on the more bullish bullish side. I'm curious. Yeah, four hour looks looks ex exactly the same. That's very strange. You very rarely see that them actually both line up with each other perfectly. But <clears throat> again, I'd say that it's probably just more worthwhile to look at whatever Bitcoin's doing. If, if you see that point, if you see that pullback on Bitcoin, you're gonna see Mr. Buterall retest this 163 and a half level. Um, and if, I'd imagine if Bitcoin breaks uh, 4600, what is it? Yeah, it's 4600. Then, I, then you're probably going to see Mr. Buterall back down around this area right here at around uh, 152 and a half, 153. So those are the, the uh, those are the two big points of interest for me on Mr. on some like Mr. Buterall. Um, here's what the weekly looks like right now. Weekly is poking his head above the 21 exponential. Whoops, wrong wrong tool. Yeah, poking his head above the 21 exponential, but still very young in the week. So I'm I'm curious how to I'm curious to see how this one finishes. Do we close above or below the 21 exponential? If we close above, that would likely insinuate some more attenuation towards the 190 to 200 level right over here. If we do close below the 21 exponential, then this starts to look, you know, it takes on a completely different tone. Um, 
but again, going to be, you know, have to wait, have to wait a while for that one uh, Sunday at, uh, at, 8, at 8 p.m. Eastern time for that one to be confirmed. But just, you know, preliminarily speaking, do want to have it in the back of my mind right now. Uh, let's go check out the other uh, the other top shit coins. We got Mr. Cardano over here joining on the uh, joining on the fun. We got the test back down to 1500 and back up uh, now hitting our next major resistance and breaking out more importantly. So I do think that we're probably going to see some more continuation off this. Uh, assuming assuming that the daily ends above 1750, that was kind of the area that uh, area that we were looking for. And more importantly, uh, Cardano now is actually going to do something quite impressive. We do have this trend line coming in right here, right around the 377. But it's right in this range where it can actually really start to change around the whole, you know, the whole forwards outlook. Kind of similar to what I was looking at with Mrs. Litecoin. If 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 Cardano can take out this area officially, uh, I suppose I suppose if you want to be a little bit more conservative, I'd call it 1900, or it's a little bit below 1900. But you know, these things like. You know, they uh, they fly so close, um, you know. I just I generally be bullish on it. Technically, there's targets above. You know, I'm going to be looking at uh, 25, 2500. If that would you know if if this level to be taken out, uh, quite a nice move actually. Definitely a tradable move. But again, need to see the need to see need to see this one confirmed first. It does look like it wants to do it. We do have a golden cross, and remember the same rule as Mrs. Litecoin. You know, I mean, you might you might be getting another chance right here. Golden cross right here above all these moving averages. I'm not bearish on anything that looks like that. And we had that confirmed yesterday, and that's exactly what we were looking for. A test back down to the 21, picked back up, and marched on higher. Very, 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 very good. I mean, that's exactly what, you know, exactly what I want to see. And I would not be bearish on this thing as long as it's above. I mean, this is, this is where it gets tricky, though. And this is why I don't really want to be entering in right here unless we take out uh, 1900. But uh, as long as we're above the 21 exponential, I would be running with that assumption. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's go back onto the other screen here. And uh, what else we got? BNB coin. Uh, BNB again marching its way toward towards our target of about what is it? Twenty one to twenty two. Can just eyeball it out. About twenty one and a half. It looks like. Uh, very powerful chart. Um, you know, e you know, an even an even more powerful chart than Mrs. Litecoin, but uh, I do kind of put this one in its own category. Uh, as long as this one defends about seventeen and a half dollars generally bullish i mean we we got the big breakout out of 17 and 17 and a half right here uh ever since then it's you know the same thing as mrs litecoin just generally an upwards outlook uh towards 21 and a half dollars right over here <clears throat> it would be the next sort of major area of uh of uh, uh of interest that i would be looking for uh zcash zcash joining the rest of the market with a major leg up actually taking out our horizontal right here marching towards the next resistance right around uh, 79 I would be looking for a pullback here, uh, relatively speaking. Going to do whatever the rest of the market do does, does though, as uh, typically all the alt cones do. We got uh, Bcash right over here hitting a major... Wow, I completely missed this one. Um, I mean, I don't even think I've talked about it for the last few days. Uh, but 200 exponential rejecting so far. I'd imagine that uh, we're probably getting, probably getting ready for a pullback. Uh, next support right around here, around uh, 230, it looks like. Just going back from these last couple of, couple of spikes. Um, going over to Tron Cash, I'm gonna guess that Tron Cash is holy fucking moly. Yeah, we took out our we took out the two and a half levels, uh, the two and a half cent level right over here. March towards the next target at about three cents. Uh, overall, same kind of deal as the rest of them. Uh, we actually do have a measured move to be made on this on you know on this formation, I think, and it's pointing actually right around the three seven seven exponential. Uh, so I would be looking for a pullback right over here, but overall I would be looking for this move to to evolve higher uh, towards uh, three point two cents. We'll call it. 3.2 cents. Um, by the same token, uh, want to see 2.7 cents defended. Uh, Neo Cash. Uh, Neo. I mean, we're just seeing the rest of the market kind of follow through. Actually, this is this is actually quite a good sign. It's actually quite a good sign. Now, this one this one is getting sold off a little bit. Let's go down to a lower time frame. Uh, man, bought up bought up pretty damn well as uh, pretty pretty damn aggressively as well. I mean, this is what's making things a little bit more interesting because we are seeing a lot of these alts now sustain these rallies and be bought up almost instantly. But overall, I do think that this is quite quite an impressive move. I think that we've actually even hit the target on this. Let's uh let's do it out. Probably yes, we have, and I would be probably looking for I I, I would be looking for a little bit of consolidation lower. Uh, I want to see eleven dollars uh, defended right over here. If eleven dollars is defended successfully, then we'll try again higher, likely around the fourteen dollar mark. Um, yeah, about about fourteen seventy seventy five ish area. Uh, EOS Cash uh, again, same sort of thing. Actually taking a, taking a stab at our upper target about five dollars and sixty cents. But same thing here as Mrs. Litecoin. You know, we got we got the move, we got the big breakout. In fact, this one looking pretty relatively strong as well. 
Um, as, as soon as it took out the 450-ish area, uh, you know, it's, yes, we can talk about upwards targets, but I'm just generally looking for upside. I want to see this level defended if it does come back down about 460. As long as it's above 460, I run with the assumption that this is, you know, generally good, generally okay. By the same token, major resistance right here at about 575. If that area breaks out, you know, we can talk about upwards targets, but again, I just, I'm, gen I'm just generally bullish on that. Uh, technically, I'd be looking at a target right here at about $7. Um, things got a little bit crazier. You know, we can talk about $9, but that's, you know, very, very far away. These, you know, we're talking about weeks and weeks of price action in advance. Uh, let's go check out uh, Mr. Ripple's nipples over here. 50, uh, 35 cent. Holy fucking moly. There you go. There you go, Mr. Ripple's nipples. So rallied, uh, rallied off. The, oh my God, this is so beautiful. Okay, so closes above the, th the 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 34 and a half cent region right over here. That was my critical area for actually changing around the malaise of this whole formation. Uh, obviously, the descending triangle was completely negated yet or two days ago. But now, you know, now obviously we are marching our way up and changing around the actual outlook, which is more important. Now we have hit this major resistance right around the 37 cent region, but I would be looking for a pullback lower, which we're actually getting right now. If we go down to a lower time frame, this might make a little bit more sense. Yep, there we go. We already retested this 33, this 33 and a half cent area right here. That was the buy. Uh, as long as we're, as long as it defends this 33 and a half cent area, I'd be bullish on this looking for, well... That's what makes it difficult. We already got the test of 37 cents. I would be looking for another test of 37 cents, most likely. Uh, daily Stokes, plenty of room to the upside. Daily RSI. Uh, levels that we haven't seen in well over a year. Well over, or sorry, not well over a year. Uh, since, since September of last year. Uh, certainly not well over a year. Um, but still, you know, I would be looking for, I would be looking for another test of this uh, 37, 38 cent region. Sorry, 37 and a half cent region right over here. Let me just make sure that my other screen is safe and Safu. Come on, baby. Show me the power, baby. Show me the power. There you go. You got to sweet talk the price action when you want it to do what you want to do. Um, okay, cool. So uh, we spoke about that. We spoke about that. Let's go check out Monero Cash, $70.50. Same thing on this one. Hitting a major resistance. I would be looking for a pullback. I really want to see this level defended if it is going to maintain its more bullish posturing, which is uh, 64 and a quarter. Uh, if it does pop back down around there, I'd probably be looking to be a little bit of a buyer for a bounce at the very least and, uh, and charge its way higher. Next major resistance, right around $80. <clears throat> we do see daily stokes getting up there, but that's okay. Not like crossing down or anything like that. Daily daily RSI on, in levels that we haven't seen since December of, uh, of 2017 when Bitcoin was at uh, 20000 and Monero Cash was at uh, almost $500. So again, you know, if you know if this thing breaks out, uh, the 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 big breakout trend line is going to be right around eighty dollars and seventy seven cents. Let's just call it eighty one dollars, kind of you know, make it more simple. Um, if that happens, I generally just become bullish on Monero. Uh, I'd I'd be looking technically for a move towards ninety four and a quarter, but really realistically speaking, it's just it's just generally up, you know, generally up at that point. Uh, Stellar Cash, Stellar Cash, ooh, hitting our twelve and a half cent target right over here. Beautiful. I do believe that we're probably going to pull off this level because this level is very important. Keep in mind. That this level is born all the way back from, uh, to, you know, all the way back from December 2017 as well. During this consolidation, all the way over here, getting this whole year's worth of, of price action breaking in December 2018, one year later, and retested right over here. Aggressive sell-off, retested right over here again. I'd imagine that we probably do sell off this area and retest a little bit lower, right around 11 and a half cent, uh, and I'd be looking for a bounce there. Uh, the quite, you know, the 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 big thing is though, is that if we can actually break. If we can actually break this 12 and a half cent region, that would be, that would confirm in my mind that this whole segment is over and we are ready to roll. You know, yes, there are resistances overhead. You know, you're going to, you're going to have resistance right around 16 and a half cent, uh, 19 cent, but overall just be, you know, more bullish on it. Looking for another, another try back into this region around the 20 cent region. Okay. All right. Uh, we still spoke about that. Let's go check out some. Uh, let's go check out some traditional markets really quick. Uh, where's my traditional markets? There we go. Traditional markets 280, 286. Again, same thing. You know, it's 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 beautiful because we got to see traditional markets do this first, then Mrs. Litecoin. Sorry, BNB, then Mrs. Litecoin, and now we're kind of seeing the rest of the crypto market follow. But essentially, uh, Golden Cross right over here, Green 55, Purple 200, above all major movement averages. I'm never bearish on anything that looks like that. Yes, you can talk about resistances overhead. I'd say that we have resistance right around 288, 289. Uh, but as long as we are above the 21, I am, uh, you know, I am essentially, you know, I'm, I'm bullish on this, looking for it to try higher. Jesus Christ, man, this thing is moving over here. Come on, baby. It's moving or mooning. What's, what's moving? Uh, <laughs> just talking with myself once again. Uh, but yeah, you know, essentially my opinion on this was wrong and this is why i like to always and i want to be always very very open and honest with when i'm wrong like on my opinion because technical analysis helps me 
when I'm wrong in my opinion. My opinion, I don't trade my opinion, but my opinion was 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 bearish right over here. I was saying, ah, oh, we'll probably come back down and test 275, 275 and a half. But I would never take that trade because we're above all major movement averages while we have the golden cross. So even though my opinion's wrong, can still make money. And that's that's I mean, that's exactly what I did for the last like week, week and a half on Bitcoin. I, you know, I had a long, which I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily I mean, I wasn't necessarily bullish at the time, but it was the right thing to do at 39.30. And now, well, <laughs> just kept on taking out resistances. So fair enough. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Just play the position from a technical analysis standpoint, not from my opinion standpoint, because my opinion is wrong all the fucking time, man. I'd, I'd be broke if I traded my opinion. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, okay, so yeah, you know, same thing on this one. I'd just be generally bullish. Uh, you know, daily Stokes up, daily RSI looks fine to me. Uh, yeah, we're going to be putting some divergences at some point in time, but still, it's you know, I, I think it's got some more time. Jewel will be setting up for a sell in the next mm, maybe week. It's going to take a while for uh, for the light blue to crawl up there, but it's you know it's on the radar. I'd imagine that you know spy can do a lot more damage before that happens. Uh, you know if it gets all the way up to like you know 288, 289, that's uh, that would kind of make sense. You know for it, you know in this former block territory, do I have this area marked out? I do not, or perhaps my charts just keep on deleting it. But right over here, uh, you know we're actually kind of grinding this area right now. I'd actually move it up just a little bit higher. Yeah, about 288, a little bit on a little bit under 288 to be uh, to be fair. Okay, cool. So we talked about all that. Uh, let's go check out. Uh, tr uh, let's go check out uh, forex right now. Let's go look at uh, dollar index. Which, again, uh, I've been bullish on the dollar index for a long time on the higher time frames, and we are just making one massive, one absolutely massive ascending triangle, and we're right at resistance. But remember, this ascending triangle it has an apex all the way in September of this year. It's it's going to take a long time. Uh, technically speaking, there would be a measure move to be made on this baby, which. Probably going to point us, I'd imagine, right around uh, yeah, about 100 bucks. Typically speaking, there's kind of like an unspoken rule that once you get to 90, you kind of get like a free ride to 100, and, you know, a little bit beyond. And this th this measurement would actually be pointing right towards 100 and, and about a half. Uh, we do have resistances along the way, but overall, if we could actually break this 97 and 65 cent region right, right, right here, likely going to see this guy, you know, just over time make his way towards here. But Forex moves like, or, you know, on a time frame like this, going to move like molasses. Keep in mind, again, this consolidation can, you know, can take a lot, you know, can take a lot longer. If I could get another buy on the, uh, on the 200 simple and 200 exponential, which are governing this sort of uptrend line right here, forming the, uh, forming what's it called, the, this sunny triangle, that would be beautiful. Right now we're just hitting a major resistance. So it probably does come down. You know, it's, I mean, you go test some supports, then you go test some resistances. You test some resistances, then you go test some supports. Can be some, sometimes it can be that, that damn simple. Um, actually, I do want to check out the, uh, the Euro USD as well. Uh, where are we at? Where is my Euro USD? Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Euro USD. So I've been bearish on this for a long time as well. Uh, we had a pretty nasty bull trap uh, just a couple weeks ago, right over here on this major wake up, but the 21 exponential was defended. Let's actually draw this in. Again, I, so bizarre. I've, I've done everything that people have suggested to make sure that my charts save, but they just have not been saving. And this is making one massive descending triangle. Uh, however, if you are on the more bullish side, you say that this is a, this is a falling wedge, which... I would probably I'd, I'd probably disagree with just because we do have a death cross on the weekly um, you know on the weekly 50 exponential and, and purple 200 right over here and we're living below all major movement averages I'm just not bullish on something that looks like this but same thing as the dollar index you know an apex all the way out in August of this year it can spend a lot more time you know hovering within here and right now we're testing major supports and uh, and usually after you go test support then you go test resistance so I would be looking for a move perhaps back to about 113 ish area over some point in time uh, and if we did and if you did get another chance uh, at this 113 114 ish area right over here essentially uh, that would you know uh, that uh, that would offer up a pretty uh, pretty nice opportunity for at the very nice a or at, at, at the very least a very nice uh, risk reward trade so again what do we have on our oscillators uh, our weekly oscillators are down and you can see a nice trend line forming here or has been forming here um what do we see on the rsi rsi bearish not really anything crazy about that but major bullish divergence on it so again what you know just because the weekly chart looks bearish does that mean that i just you know immediately sell this area right here fuck no this thing probably wants to bounce back up uh, 113 and, and 114 targets um, over the next few weeks. But remember that, you know, we're looking at a weekly. So let's go look at a monthly for a second. Uh, monthly is getting ground down a lot as well. Monthly stokes way down there. Uh, monthly chart in general does not look too healthy. It does look like it wants to retest this 113-ish area. 
And then that's probably the next trade that I'll be looking towards. Uh, monthly RSI, pretty pretty atrocious, but has been living away from the exponential for quite some time. So again, I would be, you know, overall be bearish, but I would be looking for a test higher in the meantime. Again, 113 and then 114 are the two areas that I'd be look that I have my eyes on. So I think that covers up just about everything that I wanted to say for just about everything in this market, everything that trades. I'm curious, so I'm, I'm actually considering doing this. Because Forex has been trading so much more, would people be more interested if I did trading on Forex instead of uh, instead of Bitcoin on Deribit? Or, you know, or do people prefer uh, Bitcoin on Deribit? Because right now, I mean, Bitcoin on Deribit, it's like I get, you know, I get a trade maybe a week. If that, I really haven't even been trading that much. I mean, I, I held the last trade, uh, the 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 last big trade that I had, I held all the way from fucking 6,300 down to 4,000. Uh, this trade I've been holding for the last like week, week and a half. So, you know, it's it hasn't really been too exciting. Uh, would you rather see Forex instead of, um, you know, in, 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 instead of cryptocurrencies? Let me know. I can still do both. It's 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 not too much of a pain to do both. I mean, just because like Bitcoin doesn't do all that much. Uh, it, I mean, except for more, <laughs> except for like the last couple of days. But <clears throat> I am curious, I'm curious to hear your opinion if, uh, if you'd be interested in seeing that. Or perhaps I'll just start another series of like Forex scalping, which I think would be kind of cool. Anyways, that's going to do it for now. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Or actually, let's uh, let's let's briefly wrap this up. Uh, I would be looking for a pullback to about 4,600 in the next couple of days, most likely. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we are showing bearish divergence on all time frames up to about a four hour, I believe. And uh, and while Bitcoin can certainly put in some time right around this area, uh, the next trade that I'd be looking for if I want to be a buyer is hopefully down around here, right around the 4,600, you know, give or take a little bit. Um, keep in mind, if Bitcoin does break 5,150 to the upside, I would be bullish. Um, I would be bullish for a move towards, I think, 56 it was. Yeah, 56 right over here. So keep in mind that, uh, you know, if I am taking a setup right here at 5150 uh, for, for, uh, for a short scalp, I would quickly rearrange that if that is going to be the case. Um, if we do take out 5150, as the, there's just very little stopping from 5600, uh, as we saw in the volume profile, as we just see on, uh, on horizontals. Um, by the same token, if, uh, if, if we were to come back down to 4600, which I think probably, you know, it's, it's not going to happen like this second, but... Some, sometime in the next sometime in the next few days, I'd imagine. Uh, I want to see that area hold if the bulls want to take control. If we do fail this area, then I'd be looking towards, I think, 43.50. Yeah, so again, if I'm taking trades there, uh, easy to flip short as well, uh, if that's a play. So with all that said, whoops, and I just realized that uh, speaking of Forex right now, let me just uh, close that. There we go. Nice. All right, cool. Um, just pull some in right over there. Um, you know, sp uh, speaking of all that, like right now we're kind of right in the middle of the ranges, but keep in mind, you know, the higher time frames hitting all those major exponentials, all those major resistances right around the 5150-ish level to 5200 in confluence with the MBT signal, which, all, which makes me very apprehensive in this area to begin with. But also remember that when the MBT signal starts signaling top, it usually puts in usually around a month or at, at the very least and sometimes more of time grinding that area before it, you know price action actually follows through with it so it is on the radar but it's not necessarily actionable uh like this exact moment to be very clear and i, I have to be very clear uh, careful and clever with how i kind of relate time frames because i feel like there's been some confusion and I, I i hope to be as clear as possible i also understand that it's kind of a, an impossible it's kind of impossible to do, you know, people are, you know, people can't hear exactly what, you, you know, it's, you can't control how people interpret what you're saying. Anyways, that's going to do it for now. Uh, been an absolute pleasure to speak with you on this lovely hump day. Yes, it's Wednesday. My God, wine Wednesday. Is that the, uh, is that the word? <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Look forward to seeing you there. If not, well, take care and uh, see you soon.